So you might have heard of this poppin' DeFi project called Yearn Finance, and its token, Wi-Fi, a single one, exceeded the price of a Bitcoin by a lot at its highest point. It reached 43k per Wi-Fi token. In this video, I'm going to break down for you more in depth, especially for those of you who might have only heard about it briefly in other channels or on other blogs, and you haven't had a chance to take a deeper look at this project and decide if it's worth it for you to use it or to buy their token even. Hi, welcome back to Bitcoin for Beginners. I'm your host, Kevin, and I finally got a chance to dive into Yearn after hearing about it for months now. And I wanted to share with you what I found out in this deeper manner with no frills nor fluff. And while you're watching this video, if you find it valuable at all, you could help me out immensely by just clicking that like button real quick. This one is going to be a long video with a lot of details to share with you. So please use the timestamps down below if you want to jump ahead to any part that's interesting to you. So first, a really quick overview of what is Yearn. They are essentially a user-friendly portal to the DeFi space to various DeFi products with no KYC or registration, obviously. They're a bridge that connects different yield-making opportunities. Before, you had to manually stake your tokens for each protocol individually and move it around if you want to rebalance. With Yearn, you can deposit and stake ERC-20 tokens and earn daily interest, and they even manage the rebalancing for you. The options that you can access with Yearn are, broadly speaking, lending aggregation, yield generation, and insurance of funds. Besides how easy it is to use and how fast, you can also save money on Yearn by pooling funds with other people using the platform, right? If you did it yourself, you'd have to pay a ton of gas fees, like even $50 to $100 per transaction at times of high use in the DeFi space, which is really relevant if you want to get quick into some profitable DeFi positions or strategies. So in this approach, you pay less gas fees. And they had quite an interesting background that I want to touch on briefly. They were previously known as Iron, and it was created by a single developer, Andre Kronja. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. That's the beauty of the DeFi world. Any one person around the world can innovate and deploy something globally easily. He originally stepped away from this project after some drama and community backlash after his early project got exploited and he got blamed. But he later returned and rebranded this as Yearn.Finance and introduced new tools like Vaults, Earn, Zap, and Cover. Now there are more devs on the team, six so far. You can check it out on their website. And the protocol is controlled by the community, not Andre himself. Wi-Fi is currently worth about 24k per token with an all-time high of 43k in mid-September 2020. Why did it rocket so much with each Wi-Fi token become worth more than Bitcoin? It's because they have a scarcity of token supply. Less than 30,000 tokens can exist in this protocol and also the promises of massive profit potential from the platform itself which token holders can get a share of. Since mid-August of 2020, there have been hundreds of millions worth of crypto tokens deposited on the Yearn platform to take advantage of their products in search of more yield. Now, what are their core four products and their offering? First is Earn, and this is a simple one. This is focused on stable coins. Essentially, you can deposit stable coins or some other supported assets, and they shift the funds between the following platforms for you. DYDX, Aave, Fulcrum, Compound, and maybe more in the future. As you know, the yield between these platforms changes over time. And so what Earn does is that it optimizes for the users so that you're earning the highest interest rates all the times among the platforms included. Now you may be wondering, why can't you just smash the whole balance of all the users into one protocol? That doesn't work because that would drastically affect their yield and it would drop to become suboptimal. That's why the Earn protocol has to be smart and try to estimate the optimal allocation because that changes constantly. Next up, Vaults, and this is much more popular these days. These are more complex and nuanced, and this is when yield farming comes into play, right? They have automated pools to transfer your funds to the most profitable projects and strategies as the yields vary. This is super passive. You don't have to really touch anything and potentially more profitable than what you could do yourself manually. It also requires less knowledge from you and I because it's all automated. Here's an example process, right? First, you deposit some asset as liquidity like Ethereum, Link, or others. 
then they use that as collateral and manage the collateral at a safe level to avoid a default. They use it to borrow stable coins. They put the stable coins to work on some yield farming strategies, and then they reinvest the earned rewards or stable coins from those yield farming. So let's take a step back, right? Because before the yield farming days, it was constrained. You can lend stable coins and get yield. That's it, that's simple. But now because of yield farming, you can get tokens as well for your deposit, and you can do things with those. It's not as simple as calculating the yield for your stable coins. You have to calculate the price of these tokens and what you can do with these tokens too. So the urine vaults can access much more complex strategies, right? They can farm other tokens, sell those other tokens for profit, provide liquidity for other protocols and so forth. So as you can imagine, the demand for these vaults means that people will lock up more and more of Ether or Chainlink or other coins and help drive the price up. If you want to make yield farming gains, but you don't want to sell your ether, for example, you can do so with some urine vaults. Next up is Zap, and this is an experimental tool to help people swap in and out of various liquidity pools available on Curve.Finance. If you don't know what Curve is, it's like Uniswap, but only for trading between stable coins, but directly, right? Why would people want to do that? Because remember, on those other Uniswap, you have to go between ether or some similar things and with curve you can save time and money by swapping directly and remember the stable coins are at the crux of this yield generating yield farming world so you may want to swap between them because there are different opportunities available and the point of zap is that you can zap into various positions with just one transaction rather than several and there's a lot of different stable coins and zap into different curve finance pools as you can imagine also, it is worthy to note that Curve Finance has a pretty confusing interface, so Yearn makes it easier. Lastly, Cover is another product I want to touch on. This is an insurance system underwritten by Nexus Mutual, which is a decentralized crypto insurance system. And essentially, anyone who wants to mitigate risk on the various Yearn pools can drop some USDC, for example, into the Cover pool and get paid out if the pool gets attacked or drained maliciously, which is always a possibility. Now, you might be wondering, you deposit your tokens into Yearn and then that's it. But it's not quite that simple. But it is super simple to deposit Bitcoin or Ethereum into Rubet, a crypto casino, our sponsors for this video. You can easily deposit Bitcoin or Ethereum, withdraw Bitcoin or Ethereum. And also, if you don't want to place your own funds in, you can take surveys and earn some balances to play with and actually withdraw them too if you get above the threshold. And they also have really beautiful games that you can play in either real mode or free mode if you want a demo. Super easy to change your bets and then play. Nice, I want some. That's it. Check it out for yourself using the link down below in the description. So you use the urine platform, you deposit your ERC-20 tokens, but what happens after, right? You get a newly minted token that represents your deposit. For example, if you deposit DAI into Compound, you get CDAI. In urine, you get YDAI. You can imagine all the different namings for it. And anyone with that token can redeem the original deposit and any yield generated, right? So that's really powerful if you think about it, because with those tokens, you can go elsewhere and deposit and trade them. You can imagine people doing a long string of transactions with those to try and get more and more yield on top of each other. Like you can deposit DAI, get YDAI, deposit YDAI elsewhere for some other token, and then go stake or trade those other tokens to generate more yield. It really blows my mind. And I'm gonna make a general yield farming deep dive soon. So definitely subscribe and comment down below if you wanna check that out. These are the type of yield farming strategies that the vault folks try to design in those various vaults. Now I haven't talked about the Wi-Fi token yet since you can use the platform without it, but this was announced in July 2020 for the governance of the whole protocol. They had no pre-mine, no sale at all, no auction, super fair. You had to earn it by providing liquidity to the products. And in the early days, you can earn a set amount of Wi-Fi every day until 30,000 Wi-Fi total was reached, which was already reached by the way. And the governance, you can change the total amount, but consensus of the community seems to be against that. And Wi-Fi is for governance, and you can also earn some of the fees generated by the products, right? 
like withdrawal fees or fees on some profits from yield strategies. But these are a little bit nuanced that I don't want to dive to in this video, which is pretty long already. I do want to note you can buy less than one Wi-Fi since each one costs like 20,000 or more. The scarcity on purpose is very interesting since it's gotten a lot of attention as the price of one Wi-Fi token has rocketed noticeably. I kept on saying as it was going up from 6,000 to 10,000 to 15,000, even higher, that it can't go up even more, right? A single Wi-Fi token can't be worth that much, but it kept on proving me wrong. Now it did drop from its all-time high of 40,000 down to 8,000 and then started climbing up again to 20k or so. Now we mentioned that governance was done by community, but how does it actually work, right? Token holders control via their democratic voting system and community proposal system. You can stake Wi-Fi tokens by depositing it into a governance contract. Those are locked for three days after your vote is cast on any particular issue. They have a governance forum that's pretty active with a lot of proposals floating around, particularly proposals on vault strategies, for example. They also have a treasury that's funded with $500,000 for funding expenses, audits, and developers. And any additional amount generated by fees goes to the governance pool. Now, there are some major risks I want to touch on. Everything in the DeFi space is pretty experimental and new. But especially with something on Yearn, right? You face smart contract risks, liquidation risks when leverage is used, and oracle risk. Not everything has been fully audited, and they admit that. Various products in Yearn are also like a black box, right? Not many people know where and how their deposits are going and are used in the Yearn pools. They mostly have to trust that the bugs, if there are any, are not too serious and that more knowledgeable folks will take a closer look and sanity check what's going on. They also have protection mechanisms for managing the debt, but none of this is a guarantee, right? And you may be wondering what debt? Remember, they borrow against the coins you deposit and use that to generate more yield. They have to be careful though because they're managing a chain of events that they can't have a break in the middle, right? You have to pay back each preceding obligation for the whole chain and the process to work. Now with success comes copycats and there's a lot of forks in the crypto world that are copycats. There's a Yearn Finance fork, YFII. It's big in the China DeFi ecosystem and is mostly the same code base with some tiny voting changes. People in the community think, or thought at least, that it was a scam initially. And there's also other projects, YF Value, Yearn Finance Link to allow link staking, and Yearn Fuel. Is this a sign of a bubble? This is really reminiscent of the early ICO days since it's so easy to fork a DeFi project and just slightly change the rules. Now, that's pretty much it, but I want to touch on what's coming up in the future, right? They have a lot more products coming out like Why Borrow, Why Swap, Why Trade, Liquidity Basic Income, Stable Credit, and even new and improved Vaults 2.0. Some of these are already getting rolled out and you definitely need to be on the outlook for their fast progress. I like their mission because DeFi is super technical and hard to access. They're definitely doing a good job of making it easy but you definitely need to have an eye out for the legitimate risks as well. We saw other DeFi projects get drained essentially of their funds by a hacker, and that could happen to Yearn too. So I really think Yearn will go as the DeFi space goes in terms of utility and the Wi-Fi price as well. But in the meantime, it's going to be a boon in the crypto space for Ether and Link holders as people lock up their tokens and Yearn pools to earn more on them than they can by simply holding. I'm excited to see where this project goes and I'm happy to dive deep in this for you. Let me know what you think. As always, please support us by liking this video. I'm Kevin. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. I'll catch you all next time.